One of the things that I like about your music um, is is the the challenge to try to figure out how you came with the additive and the subtractive and and how how it can actually lay down and become a groove. Mm -hmm. And uh, I, I love that. So so that's the fun part for me. But the other thing that I'm kind of interested in is that how you conceive um, the idea of your relationship of passion with the spirituality, with the sort of mysticism that can come when you start layering, layering, mm -hmm. and layering your music. Can you comment on that? There's somewhere between here and here that, that I think music lies, right? There's somewhere between your heart and your head that we have to deal with. It's in that sort of undefined area. And music, I see my music sometimes going one way or going the other, and I have to be careful about that because I'm never happy when it's leaning more towards the passion of it, the heart of it, or leaning more towards the head if I'm thinking too much. So it's a very delicate balance. And if I'm in there and I have both of these two worlds operating at the same time, I think you can create a sound world that is within itself, that's true to itself. It's not, it's not one, it's not the other, it is, it is what it is. It's a very difficult thing, but it's, it, you have to think about a million things in order to arrive at one. And that's what we're trying to do. I mean, that's what I'm trying to do. Um, there's a any sense. It does, completely. <laughs> there's a rage in today's society about keeping your brain active, and about doing puzzles. Okay, we're doing what? What kind of puzzles do people do? Sudoku. Su what was Sudoku. It I believe like that a... that's what it is, and crossword puzzles. And right. you know, we're going to keep everybody's mind alive. One of the things that you had mentioned earlier is that you do this with a baseline on an airplane, or when when you sit down, counterpoint. Right. Right. And you know, and I think back to that, and I think back to my own theory upbringing and things that I've been exposed to. Nobody ever encouraged us. It was like, okay, do this, get this done. This is the way Bach did it. Take the test. Let's move on. And I love the idea that you as a creative composer person says, okay, I've got half an hour. Let's just sit down and realize this baseline and you know, write some chords together. Do you realize how many musicians we'd have being happier if well, they, if they yeah. were given the freedom to express? And I love that thought about you. And you, you teach a little bit of theory and you mentor and other composers too, so, right. and counterpoint. So can you, are you able to pass this on to your students? Um, I do teach counterpoint. And I try to get them excited about it. And um, I just think, I mean, for me, it's just something that I've always, I just love it. I mean, it's, it's like you said, it's these little, these puzzles, these games. And, and, you know, it doesn't have to be bass lines. It could be anything. Um, I'll take things off the radio. I've taken Britney Spears and put, and put uh, you know, five voice counterpoint above it just for fun. I mean. That's pretty funny. <laughs> it works. <laughs> um, I just think that, uh, you know, to me, it's not about what, it, what you're pulling the music with material from. It's what you're doing with it. So you can take something off the radio, or you can take Britney Spears and make a, you know, some uh, counterpoint around it and actually make it good. That's where the challenge is, and that's where the fun is. You know, I just think it's fun. I mean, when I was a kid, I used to do two hours of counterpoint every morning, and I think I got used to that. You know, I don't do that anymore, but I still do it. Um, I think I was just so used to doing it because it's just, uh, it's just my little game. It's my little crossword puzzle. So I do get my students to try to get excited about it. They're into it, and every now and then they tell me, they're doing it on their own, and I, I think it's great when they do that. Like when we finish our counterpoint unit, they say they're. I even had one student um, who ended up teaching it in, in, high, in a high school level. She went into music education, and she ended up teaching counterpoint. She said she did it because she had fun doing it in class, and she wanted her students to, to do it. I thought that was kind of, that was great. I think that, that that's one of the roles, and I think that as a teacher, that's what you're trying to do, is to inspire, to instill passion, to have the students find out what they were chosen to do, if you will, and, mm -hmm. and, and pass it on. Because you never know. You never know what little Einstein you've got in what any of your classes, in any of your ensembles.